John and Ken Show. John Cobalt and Ken Shampoo, KFI AM 640, live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Well, yeah. as you probably have heard, we've been talking about it, seems almost every day for the last two months. We have a district attorney of L.A. County, George Gascon, who's gone rogue. And he's been forcing the L.A. County deputy DAs that he oversees uh, to uh, remove sentencing enhancements from current cases, past cases, uh, and future cases, and also uh, removing any three strikes enhancements as well. And uh, the deputy DA, they have an association. It's their union. They went to court saying, Gascon is forcing us to break the law. We're required by law to keep these charges in place. We cannot remove them unless there's something material that changes in the case. And L.A. County Superior Court's Judge James Chalfant agreed. He, he ruled in favor of the Association of Deputy District DAs for Los Angeles against Gascon. And we're going to talk now with the president of the Deputy District Attorneys Association, and that's Michelle Hannessy. Uh, Michelle, how are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. It's a, a very good day. Yeah, you, you won a lot of your case. Uh, why don't you talk about the components you, you, you did win here? What can Gascon not do anymore? Well, he cannot prohibit prosecutors from filing strikes. He cannot force them to strike strikes that are already filed. He cannot force them to read a script to a judge that misrepresents the strikes law to the judge. And he cannot force them to either dismiss special circumstances or can, he cannot prohibit them from sentencing someone on special circumstances that have already been found true either by plea or by a jury. So any previous or current case stands. He can't change the uh, special circumstances charges. And three strikes will continue as is. Whenever they're warranted, then they'll be charged that way. For the duration of this preliminary injunction. But remember, this is just a preliminary injunction while the lawsuit is ongoing. And how long is this lawsuit going to take to go through? Well, I wish I knew that. I do not know. Um, obviously, Judge Chalfont handled the preliminary injunction quite quickly. Um, and uh, it's hard to say what's going to happen next. But it's, I imagine it will take months, months and months, potentially. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. Now, the one thing he said Gascon could keep doing is not charge sentence enhancements on future cases as long as he goes through some kind of discretion process. Can you explain this? Yeah, the strikes law is very different from other sentencing enhancements. The, the strikes law is written in a manner that's mandatory, and courts have held that it's mandatory. That's not the case with most other sentencing enhancements. So the law is less clear on that. There is some areas of the law that suggest it's mandatory, such as the Victim's Bill of Rights, which is in our state constitution. But um, the preliminary injunction focused on the strikes law, which is very cut and dried. The others are going to have to be litigated as we move through this lawsuit. Um, uh, do you, you think that the law is written in a way that should prevent Gascon from having any discretion on these in future sentencing enhancements? Well, quite potentially, yeah. The, the Marcy's Law, which is in our California Constitution, it's part of the Victim's Bill of Rights, does say that all sentencing enhancements must be filed. But there isn't case law on that as there was on the three strikes law. So that's going to have to be a future ruling of the court on that particular area. And he didn't make any orders with respect to that for the preliminary injunction. So the judge was saying that Gascon was trying to order the deputy DAs to do something illegal all day, every day in all these cases. He did. He said in his written ruling, he writes, the district attorney's disregard of the three strikes plead and prove requirement is unlawful. He put that in writing. He also said that, you know, there's a real prospect of sanctions and an employee shouldn't have to be forced to choose between his job and complying with the law. So what does this do to... Uh everyday business with Gascon and the deputy DAs. His employees have revolted and they've won uh, a huge case. 
So look, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say they're revolting. This lawsuit is not an effort to govern the office or to prohibit him from setting policy. The purpose of the lawsuit is to make sure that the policies don't direct prosecutors to do anything that is either illegal or unethical. You know, we took an oath to follow the law and follow the Constitution. And if only where the policy puts us at odds with that does the lawsuit challenge that. Doesn't Shouldn't the district attorney know that something like this is illegal? How could you be a district attorney and not know the laws regarding your own responsibilities? Well, even in his special directives, he acknowledges that the, you know, that, that the law has been found constitutional, but he thinks it should be unconstitutional, and uh, he thinks it's bad public policy. But the, the answer to that is through legislation or a challenge in the courts, not to try to govern, to legislate by fiat, which is what he's done in some areas of his policy. Well, yeah, here's, I guess, what a lot of people aren't getting. If he knows it's illegal and, and that he knows it's constitutional, well, how, how did he ever think he was going to get away with this? Well, his position and the position of his supporters has been the voters voted for him. Therefore, he should be able to set policy. But the reality is, reality is the voters and far more voters than voted for Mr. Gascon or the district attorney voted for the strike law twice. Um, when it originally passed, it passed by over 70 percent in a statewide election, almost six million voters. And again, eight years ago, it passed by nearly 70 percent. So if you want to talk about following the will of the voters, that means following the law as the voters enacted it and as their legislature enacted it. I don't remember him campaigning on breaking the law. I mean, well, <laughs> I don't I don't think people voted for him to break the law. I don't think anyone understood that that's what he intended to do in all fairness. And I don't think he widely publicized intent and intent specifically with respect to the three strikes law. But in general, he campaigned on lower and reduced prison sentences. So if you want to consider it under the umbrella of reduced prison sentences, that's where you can file that piece of paper. So uh, is he going, well, you, you said it's just a temporary. I mean, can, can he appeal a temporary injunction or? That's a really good question. I'm not a civil attorney. I don't know the answer to that. He may be able to appeal this temporary order without waiting till the end of the lawsuit, or he might have to wait till the end of the lawsuit because I don't practice civil law. Even I don't know the answer to that. Well, this must be a huge relief um, when we had uh, some district attorneys on with us, and they were truly pained by the idea that they were going to have to misrepresent cases to judges. And, 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 and That's and, why it's a huge relief, yes. Because it's it's these these are very dedicated public servants, and they raised their hand and took an oath to follow the Constitution. They are obligated to follow the law. They are ethically obligated to tell the truth to a judge when they're speaking in court on the record. And it really did pain them to do something that they felt was unlawful and unethical. All right, Michelle, thanks for coming on with us. Congratulations on the win. Thank you so much. My pleasure, you guys. Anytime. All right. All right. That's Michelle Hennessy, and she is president of the Los Angeles County Association of Deputy District Attorneys. And they went to court over George Gascon trying to strike the sentencing enhancement from the cases. And those, I can add, significant prison time to violent offenders. We talked about murderers. Murderers. Can you imagine that? I want to cut the prison time of murderers. All right, coming up next, your chance at $1,000. Stand by for the keyword to text. John and Ken, KFI.